number before we start. This is not an AA meeting. It is one member's take on the exact nature of the wrong as described on um, excuse me, page 64 of the AA Big Book and the solution found in the 12 steps. This meeting has been recorded and it's been streamed live on Facebook. Also, please remember it's not an all share meeting, rather it's a question and answer for Paul H's take on the 12 steps. Uh, bear with me one second. Okay, so for details on uh, Paul's events, his story um, under arrest, uh, those fabulous elusive t-shirts and videos of previous meetings, which are on YouTube and events, check out his website, zenbitchlap.com. So to get things underway, I've uh, very quickly selected a passage from some AA literature to read, and then I'll hand over to Paul, who'll talk about it for a while before we open up the room for questions. There we go. Um, short passage from page 73, which is chapter six, Into Action. Uh, so here we go. So more than most people, the alcoholic leads a double life. He's very much the actor. To the outside world, he presents his stage character. This is the one he likes his fellows to see. He wants to enjoy a certain reputation, but he knows in his heart he doesn't deserve it. The inconsistency is made worse by the things he does on his sprees. Coming to his senses, he's revolted at certain episode, episodes he vaguely remembers. His memories are a nightmare. He trembles to think, to think um, someone might have observed him. As fast as he can, he pushes these memories far inside himself. He hopes they will never see the light of day. He is under constant fear and tension that makes for more drinking. Psychologists are inclined to agree with us. We have spent thousands of dollars for examinations. We know but few instances where we have given these doctors a fair break. We have sel seldom told them the whole truth, nor have we followed their advice. But willing to be honest with these sympathetic men, we were honest with no one else. Small wonder many in the medical profession have a low opinion of alcoholics and their chance of recovery. We must be entirely honest with somebody if we expect to expect to live long or happily in this world. Um, rightly and naturally, we think well before we choose the person or persons with whom to take this intimate and confidential confidential step. So with that, I'll, um, I'll pass it over to you, Paul. Thanks, Rich. Uh, nice to see everybody. This is just trying to manage the unmanageability, yeah, really. And in a way, we become a storage unit to all these things we want to avoid. Uh, and sort of like out of sight, out of mind, but it's, it's not out of mind when it's out of sight. It's occupying mind. Yeah. So again, it's another strategy of a failed system. You keep on managing, no matter what, how much evidence there is, you just believe that if you can, you can just manage better, it would all work out. And this delusion just keeps on keeping on. So the failed system isn't going to admit it. Yeah, that's why I like the difference between uh, admitting you're an alcoholic and then conceding to your innermost self that you're an alcoholic. Those two things are different to me. So in my case, life uh, intervened and... Uh, conceded to the innermost self that I was fucked, basically, and that I was not managerial quality, period. Not but, not a B-U-T, and then all these other possibilities, just a period, pretty clear description of, of the condition I was in. And it made a big impact on me that probably would have died in a few days, but that event led me to my first meeting that night. And I've been going ever since for 35 years. So it was like a one-two punch. The one punch was uh, conceding to this innermost self or it was admitting to this innermost self 
or the innermost self broke the news to me, so to speak. And then uh, it being introduced to a way of life to extend this miracle, because I believe if I was doing the same old, same old, it would have died on the vine in a day or two. Because I see a lot of people who sincerely want to change and you see them excited in two meetings and then you never see them again. Yeah. So something, uh, something is essential if you're a real addict and a real alcoholic. And I was just speaking to someone yesterday and try to give them the definition of a heavy drinker from the book, which is someone who could stop drinking if they had us a, uh, an, a more an important enough reason to do so. And he seems to be in that boat. And so he's feeling like he has an important reason and it's his health. And so he's going to try to stop drinking as much far out. Yeah. But a lot of us here cross the line where that's not available anymore. Yeah. We've lost the ability to control our drinking like we ever had it. And we are, we, it, when we go to the hospital, we meet, we have to be admitted to a, a certain, a different kind of ward. Yeah. We need a way of life. <laughs> uh, a vow won't do it. Uh, a weekend won't do it. We need a way of life so that uh, the corrections that are necessary to happen, you don't have to take a year off and hide in a cave to have it occur. It can happen while we are still living, you know, and going to work and doing this and having relationships. We can recover from this, these underlying causes and conditions through this way of life or design for living. So, uh, now he may be successful, this guy, without a design for, without a way of life or a community. I wouldn't be. Yeah. That's the clear understanding that I was given. So uh, this is just ways of attempting to manage. Didn't you feel like a storage unit for all these past? You know, if I did something and I bothered somebody, I'd move out of state, you know? I mean, if my right arm was bleeding, I would just look left all day. This is the strategies my life were based on. <laughs> and I mean, they were failing and they were they were from a failed system. It's amazing that I made it through to get to another point. I wasn't done, be, you know, I didn't die before I could get done with this. So pretty cool, really. So I had to stay on the operating table. There was a lot of uh, stuff that had to get corrected. And uh, I wasn't going to be doing, I wasn't going to be leading the orchestra, so to speak. I was just going to lay on the operating table. Don't get up. Don't play doctor. And uh, <clears throat> like we say, you know, don't leave before the miracle. Trust the process and all that stuff. And <clears throat> so far, so good. And a lot of things that <clears throat> looked impossible to correct. And the only solution was to avoid or distract or deny or try to hide like these pre people were doing. Uh, those things were the light was shown on them, shined on them. And uh, step six and seven became very, very active. What I was getting to see was not of me. So I kept surrendering it to that higher power to do with it as it would. And uh, it's sort of like bringing a suit to the to the dry cleaner. And when you pick it up, it looks a whole lot better. So this basically uh, what happened. So now I can live a day at a time somewhat successfully. And uh, yeah, so yeah, this is isn't the problem that we're not managerial quality, but something, and I don't believe you're doing the managing. I believe this idea of self is managing your life. And it has a different agenda than yours, even though it doesn't, it doesn't reveal it to you. If you looked at the evidence, you would see that you were hoping to end up in LA and you keep ending up in Des Moines, Iowa. So something's off. 
Yeah. <laughs> I was attempting to go out and have some fun and then I'd be in jail by 11 at night. I'd get out. I'd do basically the same thing two nights later and I'd still be surprised when I ended up in jail again. I mean, talk about being out to lunch. So spiritual awakening is you wake up to a lot of stuff. Yeah, that you used to be asleep under. Yeah. And then you start seeing things as they are, not how you thought they should be or how you hope they will be, but really how they are. Like in Zen Buddhism, they talk about you see blue as blue and red as red. It's like there's not a giant dis disparity between what you're seeing and the report you're getting back from the head, so to speak. Yeah. So, yeah. Just be done with it, really. Admit your not managerial quality, that you're basically fucked, and uh, follow these simple suggestions a day at a time, and uh, that unsuspected inner resource will be suspected, and uh, the mental state will diminish where the problem resides, and what you call the spiritual condition will become not more amplified, it'll be more noticed. You're, you'll be acknowledging it. Instead of acknowledging the finite self, you'll be acknowledging the infinite. And your life's going to look d different from, you know, based on this new way of life, uh, you know, you're going to have a new freedom and a new happiness, a new attitude and a new outlook. It's just, it's not like, only one out of a hundred get that. It's basically if you follow this with sincerity and shit, you're going to have it. It's going to happen. It's not like a lottery. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you just tell the truth and stay on the operating table. Don't get up. Don't play doctor. And uh, yeah. So, yeah. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. So, yeah, if any of you have any questions, just, uh, yeah, raise your virtual hands. There's, there's no questions just yet. I was just, I was just thinking when you first started, I could really relate to what you were saying about that distinction between admitting I'm powerless and that I'm not managerial quality, which is easy. I can say that. I say it right now. But then my behaviour... My innermost obviously doesn't believe that because I go around trying to control everything all day. Yes. So yeah, I can really relate to that. Well, because there's like uh, almost like shelves of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, there's the knowledge of the head and then there's knowledge in a sense of being. So uh, the head can say it's fucked, but it's still squirming and doing something. It doesn't stop which would be a surrender. And then there's the recognition that you're screwed and then something happens, yeah. Yeah. And hopefully you become privy to an unsus uh, un you know, before an unsuspected inner resource. And that is the basis of the whole program, which is reliance on something other than self, really. And so, if you can see self as foreign, that's going to lead to a breaking of a of the bondage of self or the reliance of self. If you keep calling its expressions and manifestations yours, you're going to try to be free as self. It's just the way it goes. Yeah, it's a simple little correction, but it has a lasting effect. And if it's not seen, it's having a lasting effect. Yeah. You're going to keep trying to get out of self as self. And we've seen how that works. Yeah, it doesn't. So I my whole uh, event really was seeing what self meant to me as foreign, finally. Yeah. And I think uh, AA hinted at it quite a lot when they really, really was pushing the idea that this is a disease. Because again, uh, do you get guilty because you caused cancer in yourself? I don't know. Maybe if you smoked a lot of cigarettes and then you could get into that. But, you know, usually you're taking 
you come down with cancer or something. It's not like something, but the mental disease of alcoholism, it has you, uh, it's like the disease is talking to you as the disease, you know, it's just crazy, really. And uh, the guilt and shame it accrues is mind boggling and you become a storage unit, really. What else is going to be able to enter your life if your life is full of shit, really? Really? There's not, there's no room. Yeah. You so everything is the past is the most influential uh, weather front you're living under. And all those ideas of things you did, like it says in this reading, you try to, they get filed in the memory bank. Maybe you have a, there's a forbidden sign on the door, but it's, it's taking up space. Yeah. Forbidden and no. And you're getting filled with the past. This is the whole importance of the ninth step is to become free from the past. Because we do, we deal with it exactly opposite as the way the head said to deal with it, which is to avoid things at all costs, blame the others. No, we admit that we were wrong and we try to make reparations or amends for it. Yeah. And I'll tell you, dealing with the same thing, that result is completely different. Yeah. You get actually, you sense a presence move in, you feel a new power move in. Yeah. Because the program has made space for this stuff to enter. If you're full of shit or full of the past, it's not going to be able to permeate. Yeah, it can't get in. So we tell the truth about what we were driven to do. We make amends where possible. And if it's not going to do any harm. And what do you feel like when I did the nice step? I felt like a whole lot of me came into my life. Yeah. Like a whole lot of feeling, a lot of me, really, not my image that the head holds, but really what I was that had been sort of filled with old ideas and old fucking slights and harms and shit like that. When that storage unit was empty, something came in that you feel that new power flow in, you sense a presence, yeah? And it's the same past, but now you're not shutting the door on it, nor are you in it, really. You're not dwelling in it, yeah? You're actually freed from the past, yeah? This is the importance of recovery. Stopping drinking doesn't lead to recovery in most cases. Yeah. Recovery is a way of life that corrects the seeming mistakes, retrieves what we thought we lost. Yeah. Reclaims our life from something that seems to us ta have taken it. Yeah. It's recovery. I'm recovering my goods. I am recovering my value. I am recovering my wealth from that which has stolen it. Yeah. And this is the bondage of self. And you can see people still suffering from it. They're in sobriety. They've done everything. Yet they still believe that they did all that shit while under the influence. So they're not let off that hook. Yeah. And that hook, is taking up freaking space that something else could occupy. Yeah. What's something else? A new attitude and a new outlook, a new happiness and a new freedom. How are you going to have the new happiness and new freedom filled with the same old shit? Yeah. When are you going to be let go of the past? 40 years of sobriety? I've seen people with more than that still held by the past. Yeah. Even in the law of America, the judicial system of America, there's a statute of limitations, but in the mental prison, there isn't. You're still fucking pay. You're still living out a sentence based on something you supposedly did 40 years ago. We don't, we're not even that cruel to prisoners in the country and we're fucking pretty damn cruel to prisoners in the country. At least they get, la get left out sooner or later. Have you, have you been freed from the bondage of self?
that arm of bondage lifts and it, it, it reaches into sobriety and steals some of the gold. Yes. It puts a ceiling over you. And now the sky is the, the sky is uh, the possibility. No, it ain't. Your freedom is still defined by the problem. Yeah. Perhaps there's a better way. Trusting something infinite instead of finite self. What would be a great demonstration of faith in finite self? Calling yourself that. You can't be more relying on anything than acting as if it's you. You can't. That's the highest form of reliance is to take what you rely on to be you. Yeah? The switcheroo is that's what's happening to the trust or faith in self, we want that to happen in the trace in, in the infinite, where relying on the infinite, you'll find out the infinite is you. Just as if you believe the self is you, you'll find out the infinite is you. Through this process, you'll be freed from the bondage of self. Will you experience it at times? Yes. But inherently, you are now freed from the bondage of self. Far out. Yeah. Some days look better than others. But I'll tell you, recovery progresses. Just like they say the problem progresses, the, the solution progresses. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to rely on the infinite. And I'm telling you, maybe you won't call it you, but you'll say the higher power is always available at all times, right where you are with no requirement necessary. Sounds like you. Yeah. It sounds like a pretty damn good description of you. Always available at all times, right where you are. With no requirement necessary. Do you have to look a long way to find you? No. You think it's here all the time, yes? But that which we think is here is where the mistake lies. Let the program correct it. The moving of faith in self to the faith in the infinite. You will now feel you are more of spirit than of body and brain. Yeah? And I bet you you're going to live in a, you're going to travel lighter through this life, whatever it has in store for you, than the way you travel heavy under the bondage of self. Yeah. Can you imagine that you can make something that isn't so seem to be so? Could you imagine if that quality landed on something that's actually so? How much power is there? Yeah. Don't you see all the miracles we've seen in recovery? People hell bent to be fucked for the rest of their life changes. They get sober. Yeah. You would have counted them out. If you took a survey, most people would say they're never going to make it, never going to make it. But many of them have made it. Yes. We're involved in a very, very incredible power. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. That's mind blowing. Uh, I've got a couple of questions for you. Well, I haven't. Well, I have, but um, Giselle's got a question for you if you'd like to unmute yourself. Yes. Hey, everyone. I'm an alcoholic and a seeker. My name is Giselle. Uh, you know, I, I said earlier before we got on, we started going with the meeting that I'm traveling lighter. Well, that was a lie. <laughs> I'm not traveling so light. Um, in reality, you know, um, I, have a <laughs> I have a situation that happened two days ago where I received a, I was part of a group text involving all family members that live, thankfully, away from me, far from me. Um, and I was included in the text. And, you know, my Al-Anon sponsor told me that I went into the beehive again because I didn't like some of my responses, um, which were reactive and were negative. Um, and, you know, I, I did the work. I made the amends. I did, I did all of that stuff, you know. Um, and then I texted the cousin who started the group text 
um, that I enjoy his his messages, but please don't include me in a group text when you do when you text this stuff. Just text it to me privately, please. Because I don't like the way I responded, and um, you know I'm still dealing with those feelings. Uh, you know they they come up in 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 ways that um, I mean they're still there. You know um, I can't put complete closure on them for some reason, but you know for the last few days it's swarming around in my mind. It's like a, a it, it, it's like a a, to a toxic um, state of being. Um, and I love when you said statute of limitations, because you know, I understand that phrase, you know, yeah. and, and, and I went from immediately when you said statute of limitations, I went from um, feeling bad towards myself um, to laughing about myself. Um, and you know, I need to stay out of the beehive. I need not respond to this stuff. Um, but I also don't want to travel with this crap anymore, you know, and, and I keep praying on it. And um, yeah, make it go away, Paul. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you with that. So, uh, yeah, so things, in your opinion, you don't, re you don't respond well to certain fam familial dynamics. So it's nice to limit your affairs. And that's a good message to send your cousin. Please don't, you know, include me in these group chats. Yeah, so you now that's wisdom, isn't it? When you know that you're outmatched, you don't engage in the battle, so to speak. Yeah you'll be able to fight another day in a way the other stuff is just take it to six and seven ask that power to reconfigure how you view yourself and others yeah and you you can't do it so let's rely on something else that can yeah this is the point of recovery yeah. is is to admit that we're outmatched and rely on something other than that which is outmatched, yeah? You're not the one who flips out. The system flips out, yes? You're something, you're, you're in the system, but you're not of the system. You have a quality that the system, the only role the system has in that quality is that the quality comes through it. It's not of the system, yeah? So the light that goes through the mental state is not a mental light, yeah? By moving through the mental state, it's, it's refracted and it's differentiated. And now you think it's you as the mental state, but the mental state, the brain, without the light of existence, isn't shining on anything, yeah? So when I'm, when you're speaking in our English language, the English language has us the doer of a lot of shit we have nothing to do with. I'm serious. You know, like, I'm going to eat my food. No, you're going to eat food. I'm going to take my shower. No, you're going to take a shower. Yeah. This whole thing of my, 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 my. This is like a trance that keeps getting. It's like, you know, people want to chant. You're in a chant all day. The head is chanting, I, me, my, all fucking day. <laughs> it is. This message is to see that may not be you. That's all. Just to put that simple idea in and see if it triggers any sense of lightness or value. If it doesn't, far out. If it does, allow it to continue. I do not see... When there's anger, I do not see I am angry. The anger has me. I'm not the one who's having the anger. Yeah. Something came through because I misread a situation and saw a past situation and I there was a, a reaction to that. None of that is of me. That is the action figure realm. I am accountable for that. 
but I'm not responsible for it. Yes. And you're trying to stop shit that you can, you don't even start is going to be pointless because it hasn't worked, has it? Why do you think that isn't true? Why do you think, is it because you're faulty? No. Yeah. Do you really believe you're a greedy person or does greed come through? And then there's the claiming of the greed to say that you're a greedy person. Yeah. Yeah. This is the way I feel like the traffic of, of conscious contact, we're misreading the traffic. We're thinking it's going north when it's going south. It's just fucking way off. Yeah. So here we are awake or conscious and we're watching the reactions and the, the triggers of life. And we keep having us fucking completely involved in it. Which the idea of you and me is a reaction. Yeah. Conscious contact. It's not Paul in contact. It's conscious contact. Yeah. Then Paul jumps in and starts saying, I'm the doer. I did this. I'm thinking. I'm blah, 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 blah. And then that life because it's not a truly capturing of the living of it, you are living an interpretation of it. And the interpretation is you lost it and you did this and you did that. I don't believe you did shit, literally. Yeah. You're laying there, they put something on your elbow and they can twitch your muscle and it moves. You had nothing fucking to do with that. Yeah. Of course, the head says, wow, I moved my muscle. You didn't move the muscle at all. It, the muscle being moved bypasses you completely. The idea of you. You come after. Yeah. Life is going on. Yeah. <laughs> I love your analogy. That's so great. <laughs> well, I'm telling you. The bondage of self has you the doer of a lot of shit you have nothing to do with. Yeah. And if you're carrying guilt about something that happened while you were under the influence for the 40 years, you've surpassed the statute of limitations. Way. I mean, you know, they don't even need to lock you in the prison. You lock yourself. You never even check the door because you're berating and you're still guilty and shameful for shit that you didn't even do. You were compelled to do it while under the influence. You're still, they don't even have to have a guard. You're not going anywhere. You fucking close the door on yourself all day. What, what are you thinking you did? Oh, I took that fucking, you know, extra piece of pizza, 19, 1968. What? You, the statute of limitation was about 10 minutes after fucking the pizza taken, not 40 years ongoing case. Yes. It's just arrogance of self. You're not that fucking important. You know what I mean? You're not that fucking important to go back to the files of 40 years ago over and over to see all your faults and mistakes. You're really not. Yeah. No one else gives a shit about the investigation. That's why, you know, read the third step part where they talk, you know, that person driven by self-will can look virtuous and kind. Yeah. Yeah, could be generous and charitable, but it's it's that that whole life is being lived from a sense of self. This is the mistake. AA is attempting to allow a correction of that mistake, and instead of being self-centered, will be centered. Yeah, and just let's see what happens, and maybe forgiveness will flow much easier about other people's mistakes and your own. Maybe you know. <laughs> All those files will be null and voided, you know? Uh, you know, I got a letter. It was so trippy. I'd been sober about 14 years or something. And I get a letter from uh, back east. 
and I saw the title and it was from the Fugitive Squad. So Nassau County, Long Island wanted me to give myself in on Monday morning for past charges. <laughs> like I made, I bought a air ticket immediately. Yes. Oh yeah. I'm going to, I'll be there Monday morning at nine. <laughs> so, so I call up my brother-in-law who was a, worked. He was a lawyer that worked with a judge. And I said, asked him to check it out. So what they do with these old charges, every once in a while, they go through them all and they throw out maybe the last feeler to see the, the Jamoke is going to buy it and go there yeah, and get just it want to close it. Or, or something like that. This is what the head does every day, all day. You're getting sent these fucking things that, from the fugitive squad. And your head is bringing up a mortal sin you committed 40 fucking years ago, and you may are coping it all day. It's freaking insane. It's slavery. It's slavery in time. People think they're enslaved in time. Their work, you're enslaved in time by all these past regrets and all this other bullshit. It is. So I didn't go. He, I, he said something simple. I said, well, what should I do? Don't come back to New York. What I'm saying is stop fucking at having faith in the head. That's like not going back to New York. There'll be no charges where you are right now. In the head, you're already convicted. In the head, you're already convicted. Yeah, don't, don't, Follow the summons to go to the court of the head. You've convicted already. You're always going to be a fugitive. It needs you to be pinned down by the past so it can remember you as that which it, you were to be that which you are now. It's the bondage of self. The bondage of self, its main structure is time. Yes? You have to be remembered to be fucked up. So, yeah. So you can't match, you know, one of your affairs is group chats from your family. You can't live the principles in your affairs. So just limit your affairs right now. That's all. That's what, and you did. There you go. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah. Don't have to, you know, send out a, a group chat, you know, chat. I'm limiting my affairs. It doesn't have to be a big declaration. Just freaking live it. That's all. Yeah. To me, really, living amends are incredible. And really, the one who needs the most amends is you <laughs> from the non-living of this life. So make a living amends. Yeah. And Fucking go to your files. If anything is like five months old, fuck it. You know, it's just, just, just uh, put it in the shredder. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I mean, seriously. What did Jesus supposedly said on the, on the cross? Forgive them for they know not what they do. Do you think that was applied just to that situation at that moment? It was an incredible statement. Yeah. When you were under the influence, you did not know what you were fucking doing and you had no power to change it. Yes. Jesus. You know, life is going to depart sometime. You're going to pass away. Yeah. Being present is a full life. Being available to what's actually happening is a full life. You don't feel like you're ever gypped or cheated. You're here completely. Yeah. If you live on this time space, you're going to be waiting for your head to tell you you're dead, and it won't because it will have gone quiet. Yeah. You'll probably hear the last thing. It will really fuck you in the last second. It will probably say, you really blew it. And then you pass away. <laughs> Imagine. 
what a what a you know goodbye note from your head. <laughs> you really fucking blew it. Boom. You want to end on that note? <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's mean. <laughs> no, it's believable. That's the problem. Ah, yes. Our belief is in it. That gives it all yeah. the power it has. When you lose interest in it, it's the greatest rebuke you can ever give it is to lose interest in it. Yeah. Not fighting it, not trying to defeat it, not trying to change it, just losing interest in the damn activity is the real, that's the killer punch, really. Losing interest. Losing interest in self is the starting of the whole recovery program. Losing interest in self, you'll gain interest in what you can contribute to life, interest in other people. And all these possibilities are just waiting for that loss of interest in self to occur. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. That's the last comment. Why did you listen to me? There's, um, there's another question for you from Lisa. Lisa, if you'd like to unmute yourself. Hi, I'm Lisa, a grateful member of um, several 12-step programs. Thanks so much, Paul. Um, in hearing the reading, it seems to me like um, what you're talking about um, is, you know, that we think that um, we're holding on to something that's valuable. Like it talks about taking inventory and we think, well, it's going to be valuable if I feel guilty about this thing I did 40 years ago. Um, but when we turn our will and life over to God, it's not, it's a, the nature of our wrongs is revealed. So it might be wrong to be holding on to that or to have shame and guilt about something that's so long ago. And it's ego, like you said, who cares? No one's going to come arrest you for it. But the other piece of it is the double life stuff. So I don't really know which is, you know, the stuff that's uh, honestly when I'm using, when I'm active, I don't know which is the thing that's wrong and right. Um, but I do it, uh, know when I'm being dishonest and I'm leaving, leaving a double life. Um, and then it's, I think that's where eight and nine come in. I have to make those amends, but I don't know which amends is it, you know, stealing the, the candy bar from, you know, 40 years ago, is that something I going to go back and buy, another, you know, pay for this candy bar with interest or something, or am I supposed to be looking at the things where I'm lying and hurting people right now? And that double life stuff is going on. So I think that's where, you know, eight and I come in, but I also have to do that inventory with someone first to sort out what's priority, what is really deserving of an amends and what's deserving of just being let go of. Does that make yes. sense? Is that kind of what you're saying? Yes, definitely. It makes sense. Yes. Basically, you want to see the, one of the things is you want to see the pattern of how self has defeated us. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, how the self is using what happened now. So when we used to, in, when I would work with people with doing the inventory, it would be looking at what happened, you know, looking at the resentment then and now, how the head is using the resentment of an event 20 years ago right now, because that's what it's doing. Yes. So it's using the past to influence the present, the head, yeah? So to see that, and the amends, uh, is, to me, is one of the more liberating events in, my, in the program, in my experience. Because again, like I shared, a lot of my space now was being filled up with past regrets and remorse that I didn't want to have closure with or complete or own it, yeah? And therefore it owned me. And so the new life that I was involved with was willing to put a lot more into me than I was able to receive until I did the ninth step uh, work where I became accountable for what had happened to people while I was under the influence. And I just don't mean the influence of drugs and alcohol, I mean the influence of self, yeah? Yes. So, yeah. It's a very, obviously, it's very important to have a sponsor because they're not you. So they're going to see things you're not seeing because we have a lot of blinders, which are based from our past strategies of how to deal with shit, which is not dealing with shit, mostly. Yeah. 
So another person doesn't have a vested interest. They can be very clear about you, clearer about you than you are, definitely. So I'm a big, yeah, proponent of that. So and like the little uh, the little things that I've done in the past is sort of like if I get to a point where I'm thinking, oh, I you know I never steal, I never lie, I never cheat. You know, um, when I'm doing that ten step, it says you will go back and be resentful, afraid, selfish, self seeking, dishonest. You're gonna do these things. So it's almost that reminder of I'm not cured from this. I'm not a saint now. Um, I'm gonna go back to those five defects, and then there's a process to clean it up which, you know, again, involves like the eighth and ninth step. Yes. But in this, in this platform, we're talking about uh, that what, what is, what's claiming to be the doer of all that is in us. Yeah. See the, the activity of selfing is claiming whatever happened and whatever is happening and whatever is going to happen as it's going to be all about you, this mental image of you. And we're attempting to show that that rug, uh, there's no floor underneath that rug. Yeah, there's no foundation for you as the doer. Yeah, yeah, it's the mental idea. And this is how it straddles us, is that it would be obvious. It's so obvious if you look at it this way. People, many people in recovery go to this idea like a duck to water, which is something is doing for me what I couldn't do for myself. Yeah. And they have gratitude and there's humility and this and that. But many of them cannot find that principle applied to the older power. That what was dominating you when you were loaded was doing through you what you would have never done by yourself. Where's the clarity about that? Yeah. The clarity about something is doing for me what I couldn't do for myself is now clear. Yeah. I have gratitude. I have an, an honoring of that power that has done for me what I couldn't do for myself. Where is the recognition of the lower power that did so much shit through us that we would have never done by ourselves? Let's be clear about that also. Yeah. So this platform here isn't, is is hopefully bringing a different emphasis to the exact nature of the problem. I believe we have been be defeated by self. I do not believe self is us. Yeah. Very clearly. That's the point. Yeah. Yeah, like the self is the disease and we think it's the self us. Self is the activity. The self is the underlying cause and condition that actually when it goes unbridled, it turns, it can turn into conditions called alcoholism and addiction. Yes. So obviously the underlying condition of alcoholism is uh, obsession with self. Yes. So when the self-obsession gets to such a point, then, then the need for relief is so demanding, it turns into what we call alcoholism and addiction. Yes. But it's all rooted in self. This is the whole point. So that's what I'm I'm most interested in because I didn't hear it in program of AA. And so basically we're injecting it as a possibility concerning the exact nature of the wrong. Now, the self is comprised as being the doer, the thinker, the feeler, the taster, the toucher, truly the, the, that which is living this life is comprised, all the claiming of that comprises the idea of self, yeah? So self is talking to us as us, yeah? And therefore the us becomes the unsuspected inner resource. What we are is unsuspected to what we are because there's been an identification as what we're not. If we see what we're not, there's going to be a reunion to that which you never left. Yeah, You're going to have a very strong suspicion about that inner resource, and you may end up calling it you, truly. Yeah. So this is the whole point. Uh, the workings of the steps are profound, and people know a lot more about it than I do. 
but this is we're putting out a certain point and i hope i just made it clear about it yeah this is our this is our uh contribution to this community yeah because i saw self as other uh the consistency and the amount of relief that came from that verified uh, the diagnosis that that was the problem. And the problem not existing as me has given me a lot of days where the problem has not existed for me. Yeah. But the key is the as me. Uh, I believe if you're occupied in the head, the head is occupied constantly in the act of being identified as self. Yeah. And so we, in a sense, lose our nature and acquire a mental nature. And uh, uh, I think all the other shenanigans come from there. So we want to just look at, did that actually happen? Has the us completely became a self? No, I don't think it ever happened. The self just keeps telling us it's already so, and it was so, and it's going to be so, but I just don't believe it anymore, yeah? And it's actually proven to be true in my own experience over and over again. And uh, I don't feel my makeup is, quite, is, is that much different than other people's makeup, especially in this community of alcoholism and addiction. So I think what, in this case, what works for the goose works for the gander. I think it works, it can work for everyone. Yeah, yeah. So I don't believe there's a clear recognition of the exact nature of wrong in Alcoholics Anonymous. I don't. Yeah, I think a statement, they have very clear statements in there, but the statement doesn't stay consistent. They go back to themselves as the problem, I'm manufacturing all the misery. I don't believe that. I believe you're a factory and whatever's running you is gonna is going to be the the product line that you manufacture in this life is going to be based on who's running the factory. If it's self, you're probably going to manufacture a misery, not just for yourself but for others. If it's the higher power, you'll manufacture empathy and compassion, let's say. Yeah. So I do not, I believe we're the factory. I do not believe we're the factory owner. Yeah. Yeah. So either you're taken, you're taken by self or you're taken by spirit. Yeah. And uh, you'll know the tree by its fruits. You will. It's pretty obvious. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your share. And that's... Uh, the premise here. Thanks, Lisa. Anything Have else? you got time for another question? Oh, uh, yeah. I'm not going anywhere right now. Okay. Dylan, would you like to unmute yourself? Yeah. Hey, Paul. Um, I was, uh, I guess, like, I'm, I'm trying to, like, like, I feel like, uh, yeah, like the first step kind of like realizing, um, I mean, I, I do, I know that, um, yeah, I just feel like, uh, kind of stuck, you know, so I'm, I'm open, I'm, I'm willing, uh, like I'm ready for like help basically, you know? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, it seems like when, uh, like when I get into the fourth step, um, I get kind of confused or like I, Maybe well, complicated. Just, maybe just stay at the first step right now. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, stay there because the effects of the first step will make you, in a sense, ready for the second step and so on. Yeah. It is a building. You don't jump from nothing to the fourth step. There's a process. Yeah. 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 I made a mistake when I was young in AA because I had a lot of guilt, uh, how I, I felt like I caused a lot of suffering for this lady I used to party with. So when I got sober, and I was in the first step, I tried to find out where she worked in the city, and I found out, and I called the restaurant, 
And I was just, you know, looking for relief for me, really. And got her on the line. And as soon as she heard my voice, she says, I never want to hear this voice again in this life. Yeah. And so uh, I got off and uh, I didn't have the sense of what an amend was. I was at the first step. Yeah. And then after doing the next eight steps, I arrived at the ninth step. And then I knew what an amend was. And it was definitely not what I was pulling off at that time when I was in the first step. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So this yeah. is about get clear about what you were sharing about the first step. Get somebody to help in AA or someone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a sponsor and uh, like we, I did a fourth and fifth with them. And um, like, I, I guess I. But I, I don't know, I think the. I guess I just keep coming back to like. I don't know, like I struggle, like I used to have like a pretty bad, serious drug problem in my early 20s and I got sober for like three years and then and like. <clears throat> And like started doing like I was I got into Zen and stuff like that and uh kind of left AA. Um and I didn't I ended up like being kind of miserable, you know, because like AA, like there's a lot of community there. Um and uh so I, anyways I'm like coming back, you know, just because like I've been miserable or whatever. Yeah. But um like I guess like I don't know, man, I just yeah, I don't know. I, I guess I'm just kind of, I feel like, like you said, like, as far as the men's go, um, you know, I haven't done like anything like super fucked up, like really ever, you know? Um, and uh, I don't really carry a whole lot of guilt. I just don't know. Uh, I just don't understand. Like, I feel confused, but yeah. All right. Kidding, All right. Yeah. So basically, you, you and that's need why it. I feel fucked because I feel confused all the time, no matter what. Hmm. Like, I can't get, I don't know. Um, but yeah. Hey, Dylan, do me yeah. a favor. Uh, hey, hey, uh, Michael Stacy, is he still here? Mike, Michael, just uh, give Dylan my phone number. Just give me a call later, Dylan. Okay, cool. Thanks, yeah. man. I'll be home. I'll be I'm gonna be around for a while. So just not not okay. right after the meeting, but a little after. Okay, cool. Thanks. Man. Yeah, please. And that way it'll be uh it'll be easier. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, you're welcome. Appreciate you say, man. Thanks. So yeah, Mike, could you hear could you just put my phone number for Dylan? Yes. You got it. I don't know how to do it. So you yeah, got it. That, all right. Anyone else? Okay. No. Um. That's everyone. And yeah, thank you for your question, Dylan. Oh, good. Well, yeah, that's we'll everyone. Goodbye. And uh, I want to uh, announce next Thursday there will not be a meeting on Zoom because we're traveling. So next week, starting Tuesday, both the meetings Wednesday night and Thursday are canceled. Saturday will still happen this Saturday and next Saturday. It's just Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. This coming week, I try to make as clear as possible. You know, starting now, next Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we'll not, we won't have a Zoom because I'm gonna be in the East Coast doing stuff there. I hope with the weather, I don't know. But yeah, I'm supposed to go Sunday. All right, just to want to get that clear. Hopefully you won't get arrested. Oh, yeah, the Fugitive Squad. I'm going to give myself in, yeah. I don't... <laughs> oh, it's just... You know, a lot of things is based on programming, yes? So when I was, I was sober, I'll just tell you a little story. I was sober, and I was traveling a lot, and I came back to America, and I was staying with my friend, and he didn't have any service. I couldn't make a phone call. So I had to go down the street to find a little su sweet spot. So I was there. I'd been sober for a while now. I was there 
trying to make some calls. And then there was a big commotion in Corte Madera. I mean, a big commotion is someone Jay walked. You know, it's not a high crime area, pretty elite. So there was all these sirens and everything and something was going on. And I'm standing, leaning against my truck on the phone. And then suddenly a guy on a motorcycle goes flying by me. And then he he purposely slides into this parking lot behind a car and runs into your building. Beautiful move. Yeah. Just slid the bike, got out, ran into the building. So I'm there and I, wow, that's incredible. And then a minute later, the cops show up and they go by and they go, did you see anyone come by here on a motorcycle? And I said, no. <laughs> that was all programmed. Yes. I didn't think about it. It just, no, no, just came up beautifully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got to give myself in for that. I let I let a fugitive get away. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna I throw got myself at the mercy of the court. Yeah, I got chased once on my motorbike by the police, and I remember just sat at the end of a dead end with my lights off, just heart beating out of my chest for about twenty minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The motorbike's gone now, thankfully. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, listen, everyone, let me say goodbye. We got Michael Stacy as always. Yep. Dana. Dana had a lovely share the other day. I really appreciated that, Dana. Kerry's getting ready to go to Greece, I think. Walter, he's uh he's he's sort of in like a a dusky moment there. It's not not daylight, not night. He's just yeah, he's caught in between. We got Giselle. Thank you, Giselle, for the share. Yes. Al Vegas. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Sally. Rich here, rich now. Yes. <laughs> Esther. Nice to see you, Esther. I'll be seeing you live, I think, on Monday, maybe, in uh, Doylestown. Yeah, if you're interested, if you're anywhere, it's all on the event page, the, the whole schedule. So we got Joseph, <clears throat> Roman, Phil, Phil, nice to meet you, Phil. I don't know if I've seen you before, eh? Nice to meet you. Yeah, we met at uh, TAT a few years ago. Oh, great, great. David S., nice to see you, David. I think I'm seeing David. David's going to Sicily, eh? Yeah, great, great. Mia? She'll be in Sicily. Jeff P down Southern Cal. Ed in Newport Beach. Oh, another Southern Cal. Oh. James Lebowski. Nice to see you, bro. Mickey, as always. John, as always, in Florida. John K. Fantastic. J. J. A. Zoe Banks. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see who else. We got Steve in San Diego, Grateful Dave, Cassandra, B, Christine in Kona, Kimia, I hope I got that right, Jane in uh, Mill Valley, mm, yes, Nick Anthropus, Amy, Seattle, Carol and T, uh, Miranda, there she is, nice to see Miranda, uh, Oliver, I think if I missed you, I, I uh, forgive me, yeah. And I'll see you uh, soon, hopefully live, yeah. All right, bye bye. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Thank you.